Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with chocolate chip cookies. That's right, this amazing recipe is by far the most closely guarded secret in the history of food wishes. Well, actually, that's not true. The fact that my mustache is fake is probably really the biggest secret. But food wise, it's definitely these chocolate chip cookies. And not only does this produce literally the perfect chocolate chip cookie, it's also the easiest procedure I've ever seen and requires no electric mixer. So let's go ahead and get started with the dry ingredients. And for that, we're gonna need some all purpose flour. Yep, no matter what your purpose, this kind of flour will work. And then to that, we're gonna add a spoon of baking soda, not baking powder. Repeat, not baking powder, baking soda. In fact, I shouldn't even mention baking powder because now you're thinking about it. And then last but not least, of course, we're gonna need some salt. And then what we'll do is we'll grab a whisk and give this a mix for about a minute so that everything gets incorporated evenly. And this is more of a contemporary technique. Back in the day, we would have had you put this through your sifter, but you don't have a sifter, but you do have a whisk. So like I said, we'll mix that up for about a minute, at which point we'll simply set that aside and move on to the rest of the dough. And that's gonna begin with a little bit of butter, just a cup. And why is it so yellow? Because they let the cows eat grass like they're supposed to. But anyway, we're gonna need a cup of butter and some very soft butter at that. And it's this nice soft butter along with a heavy duty spatula that makes this procedure so simple and electric mixer free. So what we'll do is we'll add some white sugar and some brown sugar. And once we add our sugar, we will take the back of our heavy duty spatula and begin to do what they call cream the butter and the sugar. So we'll simply use the back of our spatula to smear and smush and smash that all together. And things might start off a little slow, but just keep at it. And after a few short minutes of thoughtful spatulation, you should be looking at something that's very light in texture, almost borderline fluffy. And even though we're not gonna use an electric mixer, this really isn't gonna take very long. I mean, this really should only take you a couple minutes and I'm including time to daydream in that, okay? But anyway, like I said, we're gonna cream all that together for a couple minutes until we end up with something that looks like this, at which point we can proceed with the rest of the ingredients. So let's go ahead and add some vanilla extract. Of course, we're gonna use the real and the pure. And then after the vanilla, we'll do a couple tablespoons of milk. And in the spirit of full disclosure, I'm not even using real milk. I'm using almond milk. Oh yeah, Chef John's a little more of a hippie than one would suspect. So we'll do a little bit of milk, and then we'll also need one large egg, and then we'll grab a whisk and mix this all together. And please take note how when I start off here, I'm sort of keeping my whisk on one side, sort of mixing one spot very thoroughly before moving on to another spot. And the reason I do that is because there's a very small chance, very small, but a chance nonetheless, that if we try to mix this all together too fast, it can separate and not come together into the creamy mass we're looking for. So by starting and staying in one spot until it kind of starts coming together, you pretty much eliminate any chance that's gonna happen. So we'll go ahead and we'll give that a very thorough mixing with the whisk until that vanilla egg and milk are perfectly incorporated. And once that's happened, let's go ahead and switch to the spatula and we'll use that to clean up and scrape down our sides so we can move on to the final steps, which are as follows. Let's go ahead and grab our flour mixture and dump it right in. And then we'll take our spatula and mix that in, which should only take a minute if that, and do not worry about overmixing the dough. This recipe requires exactly zero finesse. Really, the hardest part about this step is not having the flour fly out of the bowl. And then as soon as that flour has been successfully incorporated, we will add the last and maybe most important ingredient, the chocolate chips. And of course, semi-sweet is your classic choice, but really any kind of chocolate's gonna work here, except white chocolate. I don't like white chocolate. So we'll mix those in, and then as soon as our chocolate chips are incorporated, our dough is officially done. And yes, it can be used immediately, but for best results, I recommend transferring this into some kind of zip top plastic bag and chilling it before we try to scoop it. Not only do I think the texture of the final baked cookie is a little better for reasons that I can't scientifically explain, but cold firm cookie dough is way, way easier to work with than soft, sticky room temperature dough. So I did refrigerate my dough for a couple hours, at which point we'll pull it out and as suspected, it was colder and firmer. And at this point, we are ready to scoop and bake cookies. And for me, the easiest way to do that is with one of these little sorbet scoops. All right, this one holds just about a rounded tablespoon, which I find is the perfect amount. And because we chilled our dough in a bag, it's very easy to stick this scoop in there, grab the perfect amount of dough, and then use the bag to even it off so we don't have to get our fingers all dirty. I mean, what's worse than licking cookie dough off your fingers? So that's my method. Although instead of scooping them onto a table, what we really want to do is scoop these onto a parchment paper line baking sheet. And please do not crowd them. I don't really think you should put more than eight per pan. So I'm going to use the old classic 21212 placement system. 
Then once we've scooped and evenly spaced our dough, we will transfer that pan into the center of a 375 degree oven for about 12 minutes or until our cookies get beautifully golden brown around the edges and look like this. Check it out, those look good. And if everything's gone according to plan, the outside of our cookies should be beautifully crisp. But even though the outsides are crispy, the cookie itself remains flexible, moist, and beautifully chewy. So what I like to do is just slide them off using the paper onto a cooling rack, just like that, and those will firm up enough to handle in just a few minutes, at which point we can lose the paper and ideally let these cool completely. I know, some of you like warm chocolate chip cookies. That is your right. You are the snooky of your cookie. But I think to fully appreciate the texture and taste, you should let these cool all the way down to room temp. And by the way, to kill time while I waited for mine to cool, I decided to hold one up to the light so we could see just how thin these are and also kind of see that inner bubbly matrix that gives these cookies their incredible texture. But anyway, I did let mine cool at which point it was time to taste what I consider the perfect chocolate chip, which for me means the perfect balance between crispy and chewy, which is exactly what I think we have here. But don't take it from me, listen for yourself. And despite the outer edges being crispy, the rest of the cookie is still flexible, chewy, moist, and unbelievably delicious. So anyway, that's it, the official Food Wishes chocolate chip cookie my sincerest apologies for making you wait eight years for this. Hey, I've been busy, but I am glad we finally posted it, and I really, really do hope you give this a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.